This video is brought to you by Skillshare. Stay tuned to later in the video for all the details. I'm on my way now. Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. If you happen to be new around here, my name is Trevor and this is Anna. We are the Delightful Travelers. Make sure to click on subscribe and that little bell to follow along in our adventures. Today we are back in Halifax and it's been a while since we've done a food focused video. So let's find some waterfront street food. Over the last few months, we've spent a significant amount of time here on the waterfront, especially during lockdown, but of course nothing was open. It was super quiet. Now it's summertime. It's the perfect time to spend time on the waterfront. Everything's pretty open. There's lots of people around. It's a beautiful day. And we're excited to eat some food. Right now we are standing in a place called the Salt Yard. It's kind of new. It's a new addition to the waterfront here. They're always adding on to it, so it's very exciting for us because we live close by. Now we mentioned at the first of the video that we're going to be focusing on street food but specifically here on the waterfront. So we're not saying this is the best street food in all of Halifax. I'm sure some of you watching have your favorites so let us know below in the comments but today this will be our main focus. So where we're standing right now is a brand new area of the waterfront. It actually just opened a few days ago. They've been working on it for months and months and it's so exciting to see it finally come to life. It's literally just seconds from the salt yard so they have all these tables, different types of chairs and uh, seats set up. They have Adirondack chairs which just kind of lays around. They also have built-in benches. It's really neat but by the way they're still working on the wharf over there so if you hear a lot of construction noise that's why. Okay we decided to start this off with a bang. This is classic Canadian eh? We got some poutine and if you don't know what poutine is it is a classic Canadian dish that comes from Quebec and now it's famous all over Canada. What is it? It looks like fries and gravy, which it is, except there's a secret little ingredient in here. There's cheese curds. So you can't just put any cheese in this. It has to be cheese curds if you want to be Canadian. I'm just going to go for it. This smells intense and I'm outside. Oh, okay. We don't eat poutine very much, like maybe once, twice a year. This is outstanding. The gravy is super rich and thick and the french fries are just like golden, crispy. Mm. What a dish. This is something I want to eat more of but I can't, you know, I'm just going to gain weight if I do that. Mm -mm -mm. I like this one. This looks so good and can we talk about these cheese curds? Like Trevor said, that's the traditional way to make them. You will definitely find some like might we say lower end places that might make your uh, putin with mozzarella and that's just that's not okay so if you or if you come to canada and that's what you get you're gonna have to try again you're gonna have to do a, a second stop for it um and you're also gonna find in various places like this is a very traditional style this is just straight up original putin there's lots of places that do various renditions of it. You can get like lobster poutine, which people mm. swear about. I'm that sure would you can be find it probably at some restaurants down here on the waterfront. And then we've seen like turkey, you know, like turkey and all different kinds. Yeah, all sorts of different <laughs> all kinds. All right, well, let's see what you think of this. Mm. That's delicious. <laughs> really, really, really excellent gravy. The um, fries are really good. They're just at the point now that they're starting to get slightly soggy, which I really kind of like what you have to wait for is waiting for the, the gravy to soak in and the cheese curds are also really good and if you've never had a cheese curd before they're kind of squeaky when you eat them mm. it's kind of fun all right so i think the next thing we're going to go for today is a lobster roll now believe it or not i've not once tried a lobster roll and it's very popular here in Halifax, Nova Scotia, all of the Maritimes. They got them here but they're not cheap, they're pricey. I'm gonna do it anyway, why not? So here we go, you can see the lobster on here. I went for the smallest one just because of all the food we're gonna eat. There's three ounces of lobster, some chives, there's celery in here, some creamy mayo and most importantly it's on a hot dog bun. Now it doesn't really matter so much to me, but I have some friends that love lobster rolls and they say it has to be on a hot dog bun. So if you're coming here, just make sure you do that. I'm excited to try this. I have tried lobster before, if I confused you. I just never had a lobster roll. Like this kind of classic lobster roll we have here. 
It's a pricey one, so let's see how it's gonna be. Mmm. Oh yeah, that's the stuff right there. The bread is actually um, slightly toasted and the chunks of lobster are just so fresh, just falls apart in your mouth. It's, I'd say lukewarm, it's cold, it's interesting texture, very creamy. The chives bring out a nice flavor. You gotta get another bite. Look at that big giant piece right there. Mm. Oh man. Oh, this is superb. Mm. We got this one from a place called Dave's. Now, there's other places where you can get lobster rolls, but I can confirm that this one is a home run. It's fantastic. So we have a lot of food planned in this video. Like I think we already said, we'll do some tomorrow, but we've done two savory things so far. So I think it's time for something a little bit sweet. All right, you might be able to see behind us a place called Beaver Tails. Now, this is another Canadian staple. It's a classic when it comes to food. It is, and you're gonna find beaver tails all across Canada. You'll also find it on a list. You know, if you ever look up a list of things to eat in Canada, yeah. it's gonna be on there. Like must try Canadian foods. <laughs> it is called a beaver tail because, as you can tell, it's shaped just like a beaver tail, but it is essentially just deep fried dough. You can get all sorts of toppings on it. Uh, they have like, everything from like cheesecake to uh, score to hazelnut spread. We just went for the traditional or classic. It's uh, I think sugar and cinnamon and oh it's served hot. It smells good. Mm. I think it's gonna be delicious. I don't this is another thing. I don't remember the last time I've had a beaver tail. I think I've had one in no my life idea. but it's, if I ever had one before it's been years and years. Years, years and years and years. <laughs> Because <laughs> it's still so just as good as you remember. Mm -hmm. If you've ever had like a chimney cake or a funnel cake or one of those things, it will remind you of a lot of that just because it is really deep fried dough. It's a little bit chewy. It's not too overdone. Like it's not crunchy or anything. It's got a nice chew to it. I like that it's warm. I don't know how great it would be if it was cold, but very, very good warm. And then of course, just the classic sugar and cinnamon. This is quite delicious. I have to say it is very nice to see all these people out and about today. We've been on lockdown for a while and there hasn't been a lot of folks outside. Today's totally different, but one thing I can't figure out right now, what's Hannah doing? All right, uh, fill me in. What's happening over here? Well, I'm trying to get a good photo of my coffee with a nice background, but I don't know. The lighting's maybe off. I maybe need some props or something like that. I have an idea. Maybe our sponsor can help. Oh, yeah. So let's talk about this week's video sponsor, Skillshare. In the past few months with our Skillshare membership, we've learned about interior decorating, wine tasting, productivity, and so much more. This week, Skillshare is helping us out with our food photography skills. Our current class is called iPhone Food Photography, Capturing Coffee, Dessert, and More by Adam Goldberg. Adam makes food photography using an iPhone seem straightforward and simple. We learned about photographing both coffee and desserts with the use of good positioning and natural lighting, as well as the use of props, shadows, and movement. After learning about food photography, you'll learn another great skill, which is photo editing. Skillshare is our favorite online learning community where you'll find thousands of inspiring classes for creators. Topics ranging from gardening to cooking to meditation and everything in between. Skillshare is designed for you to get the most out of all their classes. There are no ads and they are constantly adding new premium classes so that you can continue to learn and develop new skills. And the best part, the first 1,000 of our subscribers to click the link below in the description will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. So you can start exploring your own creativity today. Also, a huge thank you to Skillshare share for supporting creators like us. All right, it's another day and I have to say I'm starting things off very, very hungry. I don't think either of us have eaten very much today. Yesterday we kind of focused on some like Canadian favorites. Today we're going to do something a little bit different. I'm starting things off at a restaurant that just opened a few months ago, aptly named Sapori Italian Street Food. We haven't had pizza like this in a very long time. In fact, I don't even know if I've seen it outside of Italy. Basically when you go in, they have a whole bunch of different kinds and they're all uh, cut into different squares. So you could order a, really a whole bunch. We just got one each, but it's really exciting to see it for the first time outside of Italy. Cause when you go there, they'll have like, 10 or 12 different types of pizza that you can get, you know, five or 10 different slices mm. of. And Look at this stuff. Yeah, I went for something very, very unique and I knew I had to get it when I saw it just because 
potato. It's a potato pizza. Something that's definitely not what you think of when you think of what goes on uh, pizza, but it's got mozzarella and rosemary on there as well. Oh yeah, it's nice and hot and feels very crisp in my hands. I feel like there's gonna be a bite to it. That is so good. I expected it to be good, but it's so much better than I expected. I didn't even think about it when I ordered it, but it's a white pizza. There is no tomato sauce on it. I really always enjoy a white pizza. I know Trevor always thinks he doesn't, but then he really <laughs> likes it when he has it. But uh, it's very olive oily. You can taste like the quality olive oil on there. And the rosemary is just a standout. Obviously the potato, but that's more of a texture thing than really a taste. And then the bottom of the crust, really good crust. It's nice and crispy because they just heated it up for us. Yeah, this is, this is a great street food. I would come here for lunch all the time. Take a look at this bad boy. It's hard to pronounce. I think it's like salsiccia. So on here, there is some Italian sausage, some salami, caramelized onions, mozzarella cheese, tomatoes, honey. That's why it's all sticky. Right now my fingers are really sticky. Honey on pizza, huh? Let's see. <laughs> mm. This is exceptional. Anytime we have Italian pizza, Italian style pizza, we're just over the moon about it. It reminds me of our time in Bologna. Bologna, you can get this specifically everywhere. You can just walk in and order different kinds of squares. That's the same style here. It's amazing. The crust is thick. Usually I prefer a thin crust, but I like this. It's crispy on the bottom. Tomato sauce is super fresh. Obviously it was made today. The honey on here gives it a bit of sweetness. And then you got the meat to round it out. So sweet, savory all at once. It's an absolutely delicious pizza. It makes me want to try their specials. I think every other day or so they have a special as well. So that would be really good. But if you're down here on the boardwalk, make sure to stop in this place. So our next stop is actually just behind us as well. It's literally right next to uh, Sephori. So very, very convenient for us. It also did just open as well, although they previously had a location, or they still do, in Antigonish. That's where it started off. It's called Peace by Chocolate. They have maybe the best story yeah. ever. This place smells incredible. There is chocolate from wall to wall. There's everything from bars to little squares to coffee. There's even gelato. And we got a little box of chocolate, a four pack. Yeah, we got a little box of, I guess, truffles. Um, it is Syrian chocolate. I don't think that's have yeah. said that yet. But that's actually what makes the story really interesting. It is. So the family that owns Peace by Chocolate were Syrian refugees that came to Canada. Uh, when they lived in Syria, I think they had a big chocolate factory that maybe got bombed, it got destroyed basically, and they so ended up here in Canada years later. They started making chocolate, I think in their backyard in like a shed basically, and wow. just making a very small, small operation, and eventually built up, and now they have a place in Antigonish, which is where they moved to, and now they open this place here in Halifax, and they're like it's this thriving, thriving, amazing business. Yeah, what an incredible <clears throat> story. We love hearing stories like that, and uh, we hear the chocolate's supposed to be incredible, so let's try it out. First one I'm gonna try here is a little maple leaf. It's a caramel dark chocolate. It's very colorful. It has autumn colors. Hmm. Whoa, look at the inside. So this one has no sugar as well. Mm. Rich, creamy, just full of that mm, deliciousness. So far, so good. We've got three more to try. The chocolate number two is one that maybe I wouldn't normally go for, but the person working there said it's one of the most popular and she really likes it. It's a passion fruit white chocolate. It's the only white chocolate we got. Mmm. Mmm. <laughs> That's delicious. That mm. might be a solid two for two. Mm-hmm. The passion fruit flavoring is superb. Next up, we got some more caramel. It's a caramel truffle milk chocolate. This one's in the form of a square. Let's see how good this one is. We're two for two so far, right? Mm. Oh, look, same thing. Just filled with mm, delicious flavors. Mm. Oh, chocolate, chocolate. The chocolate is just out of this world on this one. Mm. It's just so sweet, so good. I can eat these every day. All right, this is number four of four. The previous three have been great, so let's hope this one is two. It's hazelnut dark with nuts. It's more like a, an actual truffle, like the circle truffle that you think of. I'm ready to eat it. Mm. This one's super, super truffly. Like it's really, really thick and dark and like, I guess heavier than the other ones. So rich, so delicious. All right, I got a great idea. Hear me out, just give me a second. 
What if we follow up that amazing dessert, the snack, with some more dessert in the form of ice cream? I think that's a wonderful <laughs> idea and really no visit to the downtown waterfront. It's complete without ice cream. I like that. I like your thinking now. Mm -hmm. We actually ducked out of the sun so that it doesn't melt so quick because it's already starting. It looked, took us like a minute to get here. Anyway, we went to Cow's Ice Cream. It's a staple here on the waterfront. It's actually from PEI, some of the best ice cream, plus a waffle cone. Okay, the one I got is called Chip Chip Away. <laughs> so it's vanilla ice cream. There's a whole bunch of chocolate in this and some English caramel toffee, I believe is what the uh, description was. But yeah, let's try it out. It's melting really quick. It's always hard to film ice cream in a video. I don't even know why we tried. Mm. Oh man, cow's ice cream is the best. There's just always a line. Luckily we're kind of midday so the line's not too bad. Mm. It's one of those things, if you're watching this in the future, when the tourists are coming back, you have to stop and get ice cream on the boardwalk. You honestly, you just can't beat it, it's so good. Well, I'm absolutely stuffed. How about you? I feel very sugary at the moment. We yes. don't eat that much sugar in normal times, so it's a little bit weird, but so delicious. It was such a yummy two days. Yeah, we ate more good. sweet treats in the last two days mm -hmm. than we have in the past six months. Yes, but hopefully we gave you a good idea of coming to the Halifax waterfront, some things that you have to try. It's obviously way more food than that, oh, but yeah. definitely some good options. Yeah, so I don't know if we have any favorites from today. They're all really good. It just goes to show we have so many options, no matter mm -hmm. if you're into sweets, if you're not, if you're vegetarian, like there is just everything is here. Yeah. Now, if you got this far in the video and you're wondering who we are, Trevor, Anna, Delightful mm -hmm. Travelers, make sure to click on the subscribe button hit the notification bell leave us a comment let us know about your favorite food here street yeah. food around Halifax and huh? lastly if you're like I love these guys they're awesome how can I support <laughs> them we have a patreon account we also have a join button below we have some merchandise all yeah. sorts of ways and a free way is just uh, well hit the thumbs up button that yes. really helps us to and subscribe <laughs> to get the video out there and then we get to put on more videos in the future all right guys that's it from Halifax on the waterfront wishing you delightful travels see you soon